right, the time has come again for me to make a collection pickups video where I show off some of the things that I've added to my collection in the last couple months or so since I made a similar video last. And uh, we have quite a few things to show you today. I've got a fair amount of variety too, which is nice. So the first thing I wanted to show you is this hand-carved wooden Jabba Tiki idol that was actually sent into the collection as a kind of donation by the artist Jesse Kennedy. Uh, he just sort of contacted me on Instagram and said he had made something for me mysteriously. And uh, when I opened it, I was surprised and delighted, as they say, to find that it was a tiki-style java. Uh, Jesse, I have known about for at least 10 years. He originally was selling things on Etsy, and uh, this was one of the things that I got from him. This is a Bib Fortuna plaque. I believe this was made with uh, polymer clay on a kind of wood block base with some... I don't know, maybe this is uh, wallpaper, I think, on it. Anyway, pretty cool piece. Uh, he's signed it here April 2012. And then, as I recall, I did contact him and ask if he was um, thinking of doing a Jabba, and he said he was. So later on, I did get this, which is a you know similar style piece, but with Jabba. So that's pretty cool as well. And... Uh, you can see here, it's labeled uh, February 2013. I don't think he makes these anymore, but uh, I'm glad to have these in my collection, and I'm honored to have this one donated as well. Thank you very much, Jesse. All right, our next item is a little bit of a departure for me, and it's not really related to Java at all. And, you know, I do look on eBay probably more than I should, but it's almost always searching for things that are related to my focus of Java and Java's Palace and so forth. But I do really have a soft spot for vintage, just general, uh, weird, you know, non-toy related things like, uh, well, in this case, piggy bank uh, or, you know, bulletin boards or pajamas, all that kind of stuff that you might have had as a kid that tends to get lost over the years. This, in this case, is a uh, an unlicensed Darth Vader style bank. As you can see, he's got quite a face on him, especially from the profile. He looks kind of like a mixture of Darth Vader and Howard the Duck, I suppose. Uh, but I don't think they were necessarily intending it to be humorous, exactly. They were just kind of trying to make a Darth Vader-like thing. As far as I know, this is from the vintage era. It was made by Scoremore. And uh, it's one of those where, you know, it's, it's a hollow plastic bank. You have to cut out your own coin slot, which is pretty unusual. Uh, it kind of shows you the age on this thing. And I guess you'd have to cut out this bottom thing as well if you wanted to get the coins out of there. But I just found this really charming and uh, so I found it, you know, on eBay, put in a low bid, and I ended up uh, winning it. Or actually, it was a low offer. The seller agreed to sell me this uh, for like 10 bucks. So I was like, sure, I'll take it. So definitely uh, right up my alley, sort of, in terms of weird, offbeat Star Wars-related things. All right, our next item is not really an acquisition in the same sense as some of the other things that I've shown you because I made this myself, or at least I printed it and painted it myself. Uh, the 3D model was made by uh, Vivid Motion Customs, who I've mentioned on the channel before. Vivid Motion uh, has a variety of vintage style um, STLs that you can buy over on cults3d.com and print yourself, including this one if you want it. Uh, this one in particular was, I, I believe, made by combining the Desert Octopus scan that I've used so often with kind of a generic um, carbonite base that he's used to carbonize a lot of different figures. You can see if you check out his shop, he has a lot of different options. This, I think, is the biggest one, though, and uh, I had to print this actually in filament, and I printed it lying down like this, which oftentimes is not a great choice because it allows you to see more of the uh, kind of 3D printing artifacts. I'm not sure if that's what this is here 
too, or if this is actually in the sculpt or not, but uh, it really works in this case because with the carbonite block, uh, you know, the conceit of the carbonite block, I think it, it totally it totally works. Uh, Jawbone carbonite. Now he's got some stuff on the side there. I did kind of mess up these side controls a little bit because because I had uh, too many sport materials kind of printed in here and it was difficult to remove them. So let's not look too closely at that. But I think overall it turned out really well. And the paint job was super easy, just some black with gunmetal on top of it, basically. So I uh, just wanted to show that off. <laughs> Pretty cool little thing that was not too hard to make. Our next item is this Star Wars Jabba's Palace game. It's a love letter game. Now, I don't know anything about this, but it's some kind of a card-based game set in Jabba's Palace, which is right up my alley, as you might imagine. It says, there will be no bargain. Descend into the lair of the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt in this quick card game of risk and deduction. Use the skills of the heroes of the Rebel Alliance and Palace Denizens to defeat your foes and carry out your agenda. It contains 29 cards, 17 victory tokens, rule book, and a cloth bag. And looks like it's the kind of thing where... Oh, mine's already actually partially open. I just noticed that. Uh, just arrived this way from Amazon. But anyway, I guess we'll go ahead and open it then. I was going to anyway. Oh, I see. So this was the cloth bag that you could see through the outer packaging. It's a nice bag. I like it. And inside we have the cards and the tokens, which are actually kind of a nice plastic. I was sort of expecting cardboard or something like that, but no. Yeah, these are nice. Got a little Jabba's Palace artwork on there. I don't know if I'm ever going to actually play this game. I'm not really that into card games or board games for that matter. But I enjoy uh, the artwork and stuff like that. So let's take a look on the back. They have mostly this kind of uh, Rancor Pit artwork, but we also got things like the Gatekeeper Droid and the Sarlacc Pit. That looks to be it. And on this side, I'm guessing, what is this? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the rules of this game. So I'm not really sure what all these cards mean, but uh, we can take a minute to enjoy the artwork at least. So pretty cool. I really like a lot of this artwork. This Jabba, I believe, has been used on other products as well, but it's very well done. Found the instructions when I was looking in the bag. Uh, haven't really had a chance to read them yet, but you know, if you want to take a look, you can get a general idea of what the game is about. So looks like. Various characters have different rules and things like that. So that's pretty cool. So if you're interested, I'll put a link to this in the video description. Next up we have a mini bust from Gentle Giant. This is Tessic, otherwise known as a squid head. And uh, he is, of course, Jabba's uh, so-called accountant, I guess. Uh, but in any case, this is a character that they haven't made in mini bust form before. And I was very glad to see that they were going to be making more Jabba's Palace minibus because that's all I collect at this point. Uh, at one point I did have a little bit more variety there, but uh, I kind of have pruned it down to just the Jabba's Palace ones, and that's where I'm happy to stay. Uh, this one was the Premier Guild gift from 2021, although I actually ordered it in July of 2020 and didn't receive it until uh, sometime in March of this year, 2022. So that is, you know, more than a year and a half to wait. Obviously, a lot of things happened <laughs> uh, in 2020, so I can't complain too much there. You know, even at the best of times, Gentle Giant has been kind of slow 
with releasing product and things like that. But uh, yeah, we did finally finally get it. You can see on the box here, got some information about the character and so forth. It's limited to 500 pieces. And uh, as I say, this is a Premier Guild exclusive, so you had to belong to the Premier Guild, which basically just means you pay some money and then you can choose uh, some so-called gifts to get uh, in exchange for that money. I mean, you're basically just paying for it, but uh, you know. In any case, it is nice to see that they had another Jabba's Palace character, so let's go ahead and take a look at the minibust itself. So here it is, rotating in front of us here, and overall I'm really quite pleased with it. I think it's got a great sculpt, and the paint job is really quite good as well. I like this kind of subtle mottling that they've done here on the, uh, you know, the, the collar area, and uh, the skin looks pretty good as well. Really, my only complaint is the one that I think everyone who owns this bust is going to have, and that is that it came damaged. Although, in my case anyway, I didn't even notice it until I was reading some forum posts and found that this part right here, the dagger, is broken in some way or other on basically every bust. As far as I, I think I didn't see any that weren't broken. Some of them are worse than others. This one is really quite minor. There's a little crack there. I'm okay with it. You know, I'm not going to make a big stink about it because, I mean, first and foremost, it seems relatively unlikely that they can provide an undamaged one. But, you know, otherwise, quite nice, I think. Very cool uh, alien-looking bust. And, uh, you know, General Giant generally speaking, has done really well with the alien sculpts. Some of the human likenesses have been a little bit more hit or miss, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this bust the way it is. Next up we have this set of pins from Left Coast Graphics, and I was really excited when they announced these because I really like their concept of making enamel pins for individual Kenner figures like this, or in this case uh, a full set, the Max Rebo Band, and uh, yeah, I think these came out super nice. Really, really nice pins. And the fact that they came with their own little box is kind of the icing on the cake. Here it says Desert Planet House Band, which is kind of a, you know, a wink-wink, nod-nod kind of <laughs> indirect way of saying the Mac Max Rebo Band, I guess. And on the other side we have their true name, of course, which is Enamel Jizz Band, because they were... A jizz band. They played jizz music, otherwise known as jizz whalers. And that is a real thing that I'm saying right now. So anyway, uh, yeah, definitely a really cool item. Glad to add that to my collection. Unfortunately, this is now sold out, I believe. I don't know if they're ever going to be making any more of these, but you can always ask. I'll put a link to their uh, overall page in the video description. Our last item is not actually a new pickup for me. This is something that I got months ago and kind of forgot about, I guess I'd say. I found it in my office and I thought it might be nice to look at. This is something from the UK, England, and it is called Star Wars Tabletop Cutouts. It says, great for party decorations. And uh, on the back we can see it's got several characters, including a certain hut which is what drew me to it, but also some other ones that look kind of interesting as well. And tells you how to kind of assemble them. So what I'm going to do is open this up. It's got a nice resealable bag. The cutouts themselves have kind of fallen out already. They're perforated, pre-perforated, and uh, looks like they've, they've already kind of fallen out, as I say, but uh, I haven't done anything with them. So we have the Emperor, Boba Fett, Darth Vader. These are just kind of thin cardboard, as you might imagine. Here's the front part. Here, These are the uh, kind of base parts, I guess. We've got a couple of stormtroopers in different poses. We've got another base. Uh, We've got a, a teeny tiny ad at, which I think is kind of funny compared to all the other characters. And then we have Jabba in all of his glory. And I haven't really 
figured out how you use these yet. I haven't uh, tried actually attaching the base yet, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. It looks like we have to uh, kind of fold these up and remove this bit of sticky tape to, uh, to kind of form a thing that will allow them to, uh, you know, it's almost a wedge shape that'll allow them to stand up. So I'm going to try and do that now. So there we have one, and I'm guessing what we would do would just be to slot this in here. Yeah, look at that, stands right up. It's kind of nice that they're able to do that without like including a plastic uh, stand or something like that. This is probably a better solution. I'm not sure, I think probably, well, I don't know, maybe Java can stand with just one. I guess he can, look at that. There we are. So we can just have them like that, or, you know, I'm not probably going to be using all of these. Uh, so what I may do is add another stand here just to give them a little more stability. But that's kind of a cool little thing that you could put on a table during a party or, or just as a general room decoration. So not bad. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a bonus item. This is... Uh, a custom figure that I made actually in 2008 when I was kind of into making 1-6 scale custom figures of various kinds. But recently I rediscovered it in the basement and I decided to kind of fix it up a little bit. Um, I'm curious to know, by the way, before I show you the rest of it, if you can tell who this is supposed to be. Uh, if I pan down, you may be able to get a little bit of a clue. So he's holding a wine bottle. And then if we go further down... It kind of gives it away there with a faulty tower sign. And then there's a rat there at the bottom as well, which you may recognize if you know the show. This is, of course, Basil Fawlty from the classic 1970s British sitcom, uh, Fawlty Towers, which is one of my all-time favorite shows. And uh, so what I did was to take a... Uh, this is back in 2008, by the way. I went... I took a... Uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail figure that they made, which was based on John Cleese, who played Basil Fawlty, of course. And I sculpted uh, hair and a mustache on him and repainted him and found a, an appropriate enough looking brown suit, which I, you know, dressed him up in. Uh, and then uh, I also found this wine bottle and a, uh, a little rat, you know, accessory. I don't know where this came from. I can't remember. But uh, just recently, though, I added this base, which I painted, and I 3D printed this Faulty Towers uh, sign. I also, this was kind of the main thing, made this uh, moose head. Well, I, I say I made it. I, I found a moose head model on Thingiverse and added my own uh, backing plate to it here and then printed it off at what I thought was about the right size. If you've ever seen Faulty Towers, you know in the episode The Germans, there's a thing where he's trying to hang a moose head on the wall, and it comes down and hits him on the head, and he kind of goes a little crazy. Uh, I even made a little, uh, little bandage for him to put on his head, which he does in part of that episode. Yeah, something like that, basically. Well, I just thought I would show you that. I had some fun using 3D printing to kind of fix up something that I made many years ago, and it's definitely a better figure for it. And thanks to my patrons on Patreon for helping to support the channel, including these Palace VIPs right here and Angelica Brady. If you'd like to know more about how you can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, click the link in the video description.